Hello everyone, this is Winter here with Sonic Academy and welcome back for another tech tip. In this video, we're gonna be building on the techniques that I discussed in the previous video about time stretching and causing audio distortion. And we'll be turning that into a patch that we can actually play on our sampler device. We're actually gonna be using Sonic Academy Anna again as a sampler. So instead of using it as a synthesizer device, we're gonna be plugging audio material into it and using it as a sampler. So the patch I'll be showing you how to create is gonna sound like this. So it's similar to the bell patch that I discussed in the previous video, except this one's actually going to be properly in key and playable on our actual keys on our sampler. So this is a really simple patch, but I wanted to start off with something that was a bit simpler and a little bit easier to understand before we jumped into more complicated resampling and more complicated audio time stretching. So this patch is just based off this bell sound that I recorded in my home studio, and I'll make sure to include that in the download link as well so you could follow along with that if you'd like. Um, and it just sounds like this. So it's a really simple patch and it's playing an A-sharp note. If we go on to our instrument channel here and load in an instance of the spectrum, we're gonna look for whatever the harmonic overtone is of the sound, and then we're gonna look down at this little readout and it'll tell us what note our audio sample is at. So we can go ahead and just loop that section. And if you look down here, it says A sharp. So we know that this note is in fact an A sharp. I um, mean, we also have some other harmonic overtones happening as well. So this specific sound probably won't work well with lots of heavy chords, but if we're playing individual notes, it'll still sound fine. So now that we have the key of our sample worked out, we can go over to our audio, audio plugins. and load an instance of Sonic Academy Anna. And just drag and drop that in. And then we'll make sure to initialize the patch so that we're given our default state, turn down the wavetable oscillator. And then from this drop down menu, we want to go to import sample. And then I'm going to navigate over to my desktop and I'm going to pull up my audio sample, which in this case is this bell sample A sharp, and hit open. You must select your sample folder to import it and then press OK. And now if we look in our samplers window, you'll see that this audio is now loaded into our sampler. So there's a few changes that we wanna make. The first one is we wanna make sure that the sample is properly in key with our project. So go over to the semitone and push that up by two. This will make it now whenever I'm playing a C note on my keyboard. It's actually playing a C note back in the sampler device. So that'll help us create something that's a bit more playable. And then now we're gonna adjust the start and end points on our loop indicators. So take the start and put it just past the uh, initial attack transient here. And we're gonna take the end point, the end of this loop indicator, and put that somewhere right about here. We're also gonna high pass the sample just a little bit so we don't have lots of low end rumble or bass frequencies. And we're gonna turn that crossfade all the way up. I and mean, actually so far it sounds like this. And what you can hear there is whenever it's looping back on itself, you can hear the sample re-triggering. So we want to turn this crossfade all the way up so we don't have that, so it's a little smoother sounding. And you'll also hear a little bit of a click created by this crossfade, which sounds really interesting whenever we start pitch shifting this around. So it's causing a little bit of distortion and artifacting in our audio and that'll sound really cool whenever it's played back as a pad sound. So the next thing that we wanna do is go ahead and add some mid frequencies back into our sound here with the low mids. So turn that EQ on, and that just sounds like this. We can actually adjust our start point slightly too. So let's pull the loop start so it starts just after the initial attack transient here. So it's not looping back to the very beginning. 
Um, and then we can actually take the loop end a little bit, push that out slightly. And then the final things we wanna do is add some effects to kind of round out our sound. So the first one that I wanna add on is gonna be a ping pong effect. So just a ping pong delay. So go over to the effects and go to ping pong. You can bring the dry wet down slightly so it's not too loud. You can bring the feedback down as well, just a little bit. And then now it sounds like this. And make sure to turn it on as well. So it just adds a little bit of nice stereo width to our sound. And we're gonna move on to the next device. And we're gonna set that to the ensemble mode, which is under modulation. And this gives us a nice kind of stereo chorusing effect. So for this, we can just turn the feedback up a little bit and bring the dry wet down slightly. Um, then we can leave all these other settings at their default state. So it just adds a really nice subtle chorusing to our entire sound. So it kind of widens it up, makes it sound a little bit more synthetic, um, and kind of makes it sound a bit softer as well. The next thing that we want to do is add in some tape distortion, just to kind of fatten things up a little bit. So go to the tape mode, take the saturation, and put it up just over halfway. And then that sounds like this. It's also going to be a little bit louder as well. That kind of just thickens up our sound a little bit. And the last thing that we want to do is add in some hall reverb to the whole thing. So go over to the reverbs, go to the hall setting, take the dry wet down slightly, push that size up just a little bit, and then we can leave all the other settings at their default state. And that just sounds like this. So now that we have that portion of the patch figured out, let's go ahead and copy over our notes, and then we can make any final adjustments that we need to to the start and end points of loop indicators to get it sounding a little bit more like a pad. So we can go ahead and change our loop start and end points here. We can solo out our sound, and then we can hear what that sounds like so far. So there's a few different things here we can do to make this sound a little bit more interesting. The first of which is I think I wanna bring back some of that initial attack transient. So we can bring the start point of our whole thing back slightly so we play the initial attack of the sound, which is kind of hard to see, um, but that's gonna be right here. I'm also gonna turn that crossfade all the way up again just so we get more of a smoother sound. And then to kind of cut out some of those upper high frequencies as well, let's go ahead and add an audio effect in. Let's just grab an instance of the EQ8 and drag and drop that in. Uh, then we can just kind of cut out some of those high frequencies with the shelf here. Um, actually, let's just do the low pass filter. Now I'll kind of cut out some of that high end sizzle that make it annoying over time. And I might make some adjustments to the notes as well. We can cut out this lower frequency note, kind of clean things up just a little bit so things don't sound too atonal. Um, and so far, these are the notes that I have going on as well. It's just some simple note chords here. We start off on a C, go over to an E and a G, and then we have this little riff happening on top of everything that goes from a B to a G, and then we have an F and an A, and then finally another G note. So that's all for this video. This is a really simple patch using resampling and audio time stretching. We have a little bit of artifacting going on, on the top end, especially when this sample loops back on itself. But it's kind of an example of a more playable sound that was similar to the one that we made in the previous video. From here in the following videos, we're gonna be building off these same ideas, getting more extreme and more interesting with our time stretching and resampling. So I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.